Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall, here to lead you through an experience which neither of us is likely to forget soon. We'll travel with people who take murder quite easily in their stride. We'll share the fear of a girl who finds herself somehow led to do and say things that are altogether contrary to her nature. In other words... We'll have an adventure. Alice, what in heaven's name are you doing all curled up in a ball there in the bed? It can't be comfortable. Steve, I'm sorry, but there's something very strange going on. I have to lie doubled up like this. That's all I can tell you about it. I have to do it. I I don't understand. It's like... uh, Steve, it's as if somebody else is controlling me. Our mystery drama, The Telltale Corpse, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Farrington and stars Earl Hammond and Catherine Byers. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines. I'll be back shortly. With Act One. The f- I know it isn't an original thought, but it is nonetheless true that you cannot judge a man by his outward aspects. Take Ernie Blake and Sid Sullivan, for example. Ernie looks like a man in his late 30s who is going places, soberly but not unfashionably dressed, solemn, purposeful in manner. Sid is a smaller and much older man, perhaps in his middle to late sixties, bent from the burden of his years, sad but wise, if his face can be trusted. Actually, they were both released from the state penitentiary only last week. Now, when we see this Aunt Grace, I do the talking, Sid. Is that understood? Is it okay if I just say howdy or pleased to meet you just so she won't think I'm deaf and dumb? You know what I mean. Hey, okay, Ernie. You're the brain. All right. This must be the house. Three, seven, eight. Yeah. Mm, I wouldn't have thought it would be such a nice little place. That's not important. I don't see no bell button. So, knock. All right, now try to act like you feel bad about Ted. He was our buddy. Yeah, I know, I know. Yep. What is it you want? Um, are you Ted Beatty's Aunt Grace? What's it to you? Oh, we're good friends of Ted's. Uh, we promised him we'd pay you a visit. Fact of the matter is, Tad ain't in no shape to have friends right now, good or bad. Tad's dead. Yes, ma'am, we know. We were with him right up to the end. Down at the penitentiary? That's right. We were inside ourselves, see? We just got sprung last week. Uh, my name's Ernie Blake, and uh, this is Sid Sullivan. What's the matter with him? Can't he talk? It's nice to meet you, ma'am. Well, come on inside if you want to. There's nothing much in here worth stealing. Just go right on in there in the sitting room. Uh, we were kind of special friends at Tad's. He, uh, he gave us the key. Well, sit down. Gave you what key? Come on, you know what key I'm talking about. One of the two keys it takes to open a chest. A chest? Stored in the attic of a cottage halfway up Gooch's Peak. Half hour's drive or so from here. I ain't got the faintest idea what you're going on about. Look, take a look at this key. No, I'll hold on to it. You just take a good look and see if it don't look kind of familiar to you. So, uh... How'd you get your hands on it? Well, we and Tad was good friends, like I told you. 
After he got knifed, they never did find out who'd done it. We stayed with him right up to the end. When he knew he was gone, he told us about the money from the bank robbery and where it was stashed. He told us about you having one of the two keys that had opened the chest and him the other one. he gave us his key, and he said he wanted us to have his half of the money. <laughs> That's the way he wanted it, Aunt Grace. I was Tad's Aunt Grace, not yours. He uh, wanted you to have his share. Yeah, yeah. We was buddies, the three of us. A likely story. Well, no matter how you got it, there ain't no getting away from the fact that you got the key. If I want to get into that chest, I got to let you into it, too. I'll be glad to get it over with, tell you the truth. I've been paying rent on that cottage for two years now, till folks was getting suspicious. Didn't dare to take it this season. It'll be going to the summer, folks. Yeah? Any of them moved in yet? Mm, that's what I know of. But they're due any time now. You got an automobile? No. We took the bus here. Well, I ain't got one neither. Never trusted them. You can rent one, though, down at Hank Millett's garage. I'll come with you. Uh, you just stay right here, Aunt Grace. You just make the garage fellas curious. You go down there with us. Mm, yes, you're right. Okay, you two go down and get the car and then come on back here and pick me up. Steve, what does the red light on the dashboard mean? It means the motor's overheating and that's the reason I'm poking along at 40 miles an hour. Won't it blow up or something? No, no, there's no danger of that, Alice. The worst that could happen is the car could stall. Uh, I figure we can limp into Winville this way and can't be more than five or six miles. And Winville's the last town before we get to the cottage? Right. Yeah, then it's not much of a town either. Rental agent said the population was 2,000. Oh, we should have seen the cottage before we agreed to take it. Well, it has electricity and a kitchen with an electric stove and two bedrooms and all the conveniences uh, except a telephone, the agent said. Except the telephone? Hello. You know what would happen if we had a phone. It would be ringing from the minute we walked into the place until we leave. You remember what happened last year. The office was on my back the whole time. We might as well not have taken a vacation. I know, but what if something happens and we need help? What could happen? We'll make it to Winville. What can I do for you, gentlemen? You Hank Millet? That's right. Well, my name's John Baker, and this is Sid Sullivan. They tell me you got a car to rent. Yeah, I do have, yeah. Well, we'd like to rent it. Uh, just let me go back and make sure it's available before we get to talking business. Hey, why, why did you give him my right name and use a phony name for you? One of us has to use his right name, dummy. We have to show a driver's license, don't we? So why me? All gassed up and ready to travel. Yeah. Now, who told you I had a car for rent? Well, I don't know his name, a fellow we were talking to down in the bus depot. I see. And what do you plan to use the car for? Well, we're thinking about renting a cottage somewhere in this area. We just sort of thought we'd go out and <laughs> scout around a little. And that suits you all right? Just fine. How long do you think you'll need the car? Oh, not long. Be back before dark, I'd say. There's no use looking at cottages when you can't see, is there? Yeah, right. Well, she's out front waiting for you. Have a nice afternoon. You, uh, you don't get a d deposit in advance? I don't make a practice of it. That's the reason I like to ask a few questions. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's us. Uh, she, uh, she pulls a little to the right when you break her, but it's nothing to worry about. Hmm. Only thing I don't like is that fella's got my name. Stop worrying. We're practically home free right now. There it is, Steve. There's the garage just up ahead. Oh, a good thing, too. One block more and I don't think we'd have made it. Oh. And just hope it isn't beyond help. Do you think we'll be held up long? I have no idea. I certainly hope not. Howdy. Pulling in, you sounded like you could use some help. Overheated, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I, I just hope she's not too far gone. You know, she's been running very hot in the last five or ten miles. Well, just let me see what we're up against here. 
We ain't too hot to touch, but it wouldn't surprise me if we found a cracked block in there. Uh, well, how much of a delay would that mean? Uh, hard to say till I can get a better look. What's happened, see, is one end of that hose came loose and you've leaked out mighty near all your water. New hose wouldn't take a minute, but I'm afraid you've done more damage. Well, let's see if I can get a better look now. Oh, we should have stopped the minute that little red light went on on the dashboard. Yeah, uh, crack block, all right. I'm afraid it's going to cost you some money. How long will it take? Yeah, it's hard to say. Whatever parts you'll need, I'll have to wait till I can get them in from Concord. Don't carry them all here. We have to have a car. Oh, I, uh, I suppose we could take a taxi up to the cottage, uh, but then we get stuck there. Oh, she's right. We do have to have a car. Mm, couldn't go by taxi anyway. Charlie Castle's got the only one in town, and he's laid up with his arthritis. Uh, which cottage are you going to? The Carswell place, I think the agent called it. It's partway up toward Gucci's Peak. <laughs> Old Aunt Grace finally letting go of that, is she? Aunt, Aunt Grace? Uh, town character, sort of. Old curmudgeon kind of lady. Uh. She's been renting that cottage for the summer, last couple of years, and then never going up there. Nobody's figured out why. Well, we can't manage without a car. I'll tell you what. I got a car I rent out. Old buggy, but I keep her in good shape. Party's got it out right now, but I'm expecting them back before nightfall. I could let you have her while you're waiting for your own car to be put in running shape. Well, that, that would solve our problem, all right. Uh, how soon did you say you expect it? Well, before dark was all the party said. <laughs> Somebody ought to trim this brush back. Well, I've been paying rent on this house two summers running now, just to keep the nosy summer folks away from that chest up in the attic. A good thing any way you look at it. Hmm. The sheriff was after me to prune. They patrol the area around here now and again. I told him to stay away from the place if he didn't like the brush. The sheriff patrols around here? Mm, just drives in and out. Nothing to get upset about. Only thing worrying me right now is, did old Mrs. Lockery see me leaving my place with two strangers? Mrs. Lockery? My next door neighbor. I expect she was watching all right. She don't miss much. Hey. This is quite a place once you get to it. Ain't nothing I'm interested in except the attic. All right. Let's get this over with. Mm, I had an extra key to the front door made over at Concord. Hmm, kind of musty, and there may be some cobwebs. Let's see if the summer folks had the lights turned on. Well, now, that was mighty nice of them. Yeah, I, I wish I knew when they're expected. Call them all reason to get our business over with. All right, all right, you lead the way in, Grace. Oh, I thought about moving out here last summer. Place all paid for and going to waste. But then if I'd done that, there'd be my place in town just going to waste, too. So it didn't seem worth the trouble. Uh, just push that door open. It ain't locked. Yeah. Whew. Talk about musty. Hmm, ain't been much traffic. Uh, that's the chest right over there. Which key fits which padlock, eh, Grace? Well, try your key and see. Ain't you got no sense at all? Well, it seems to work in this one. Okay, okay. And Grace, unlock yours. Oh. Yeah. I'll open the chest up. There's nothing but a suitcase in there. Full of tens, twenties, and fifties. A hundred thousand dollars worth. Yeah. Look at that. I want the $800 I paid out before we start splitting it up. That's what it cost me to keep the summer folks away last couple of seasons. You don't have to worry about that. No, I ain't worrying. I just want what's coming to me, that's all. What? What's the gun for? To make sure you get what's coming to you, Anne Grace. I need this plenty to go around. No, don't. No. Come on now, Anne Grace. It won't do any good to act like this. Let me go. Stand away from us, Sid. Ernie, I don't think you ought to... Oh. Sake. She put up a better fight than Ted did. Well, we 
can't moralize much over what we've just heard, can we? One person's greed has cost her her life. But it was another person's greed that prompted the killing. It leads us to no firm conclusion except the trite one that right is right and wrong is wrong. We're left with an uncomfortable doubt as to whether or not right is invariably rewarded and wrong always punished. We don't promise to banish this doubt, but we will delve further into the mystery when I return shortly with Act Two. A dead body is an awesome thing, and I have often wondered why. Aunt Grace's body, for example. Only a moment ago, Aunt Grace, inhabiting the body, was a tough old lady who commanded a certain respect, granted, because of her toughness, but... There was nothing in her spiritual makeup to inspire an almost reverential awe. Now, the spirit having departed, the body lies on the floor of a cottage's attic halfway up a New Hampshire mountain. And at least one of the two witnesses to its transformation is frightened. You shouldn't have done it, Ernie. Ah, don't be stupid. A hundred thousand bucks, she said, is in this suitcase. If she took half, I'd have left 50 grand for, for us to split. 25 apiece. Now we got 100 to split, and that makes 50 apiece. Come on, come on. Let's get the body out of here. She wasn't much of a bleeder, was she? You, you mean you're going to take her somewhere else? Well, what do you think, stupid? We're going to leave her here? Well, I don't see why not. Well, then listen close and learn something. You better believe the cops know that she's Tad Beatty's aunt. They'd never found the loot from his bank heist. They'd find Aunt Grace up here, and they know the only reason anybody want to knock her off is for the money. They already got her tied into that, so they start asking around. Who knew Ted Beatty and Stir? Who got sprung lately? And what they'd come up with is you and me. So they better not find the body. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. Okay, okay. You take Aunt Grace's feet... Where are we going to take her? Down to the car first. We'll stuff her into the trunk and drive till we find a good place to stash her. Well, well, d d d don't you think we ought to take the money first, though? It's been locked up here for two years. It'll be okay for another 10, 15 minutes. We'll come back for it as soon as we got Aunt Grace safe in the trunk. All right, take hold of our feet, Sid. Well, okay. <sighs> He's going to give me the creeps, though. Oh, she weighs a ton. Yeah. All right, watch yourself backing down them stairs. Uh, uh, I wonder why she got mixed up in the bank thing in the first the first place. No money, what else? Uh, she must have been pretty well fixed, though. I mean, if she could spend 800 bucks renting this place. Uh, so she was willing to spend 800 to get 50 grand. Yeah. All right, watch yourself, will you? You come to the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, okay. Can we put it down and rest for a minute, Ernie? She's breaking my back. A little higher, Sid. You gotta lift her a little higher. She won't fit into the trunk, ain't he? Well, we gotta double her up some. What do you think? Uh, that's a terrible way to treat a dead person. <laughs> you gotta get her knees doubled up good and tight. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it. You know, I don't think the trunk lid's gonna close. Yeah, sure it will. May crowd the old gal a little. <laughs> she won't mind. I just wish we didn't have to do it. Yeah, shut up, Sid. I'm getting sick of it. Well, I just ain't used to things like this, that's all. All right, just think 50 grand. All right, let's get back and get the suitcase. Old Aunt Grace won't mind waiting here for us. Ernie? Yeah? Ernie, there's a car coming up the lane toward the house. Let me see. Damn. Oh. Who you suppose it is? Didn't the old battle like, say the cops patrol this area or something? Uh, I don't remember. Well, they're sheriff or somebody. Ugh, that's all we need. You, you, you think they'll look in the trunk of our car? How the hell would I know? Okay, okay, here's what we do. We'll sneak around the side of the house. We can't go inside now. You, you think they'll come in the house? Well, they will for sure if they look in that car trunk. This place is lousy with weeds and bushes alongside the house here. Hey, yeah. can you read what it says on the side of the car? Wait a minute. Yeah. 
says County Sheriff. Oh, where we better get out of here, Ernie? And leave that hundred grand behind? They're looking our car over pretty good. And just as they don't open the trunk. Can you hear what they're saying? I can't even hear them talking. One of them's getting in our car. Must be some kind of a deputy. The other guy keeps ordering them around. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to take our car away. It looks like it. Must think it's abandoned, I guess. But, 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 but she's in the trunk, Ernie. Now, shut up, will you? I know she's in the trunk. What are we going to do? Hadn't we better get out of here? As long as there's a hundred grand in that suitcase up in the attic, we ain't going nowhere. Mr. Millet, it's dark already, and they haven't brought your car back. I know, ma'am. Ordinarily, I'd have closed up and gone on home by now. Well, do you still expect them back? Um, the people who rented the car? They said they'd be back by nightfall. That's all I know. Well, isn't there some other way we could get up to the cottage? Uh, not with Charlie Castle down with arthritis. He drives the only taxi in town. What are we going to do? Uh, only one thing I can suggest. Miss Purdy lives over back of the church. She takes in tourists sometimes. I expect she'd be able to put you up for the night. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, hello, Bess. Oh, not again. Well, looks like I'm going to have to start charging a deposit whether I like it or not. Okay, thanks a lot for calling. Yeah, I, I've got customers waiting right here in the office to take the car out. Yeah, thanks again. That was about our car, wasn't it? Yeah. Bess Tolliver, the sheriff's wife. She minds the office when he's out. She said they found the car abandoned in front of the... the... Hey, didn't you say you were on your way to the old Carswell place? Yeah, that's what the rental agent called it, yeah. Yeah, funny thing. That's where they found my car, left standing in front of the Carswell cottage. Do you suppose there's somebody in the cottage? Uh, appears not. The sheriff... Uh, he called in by radio from out there and told Bess to get in touch with me. He was all through the house and didn't see any signs of anything disturbed. Well, so then your car should be here any minute now. Yeah, a deputy's bringing it in. Uh, would you like the sheriff to wait until you get there? Bess can get hold of him by radio. Oh, I think I'd feel better if he did, yes. If it won't be too much trouble. <laughs> Watch out for this one bush here, Ernie. It's thorny. I tore my shirt. Yes, yeah, shut up. I don't want the sheriff to hear you. Uh, he was up there in the attic, Ernie. I saw the light on up there. I know that. You suppose you found anything bad up there? I mean, like blood? Or yeah, anything? she didn't bleed that much. And I left the chest locked up. He didn't find nothing. Why doesn't he start his car? What's he waiting for? Well, maybe they found a body in the trunk, Ernie. You think that could be it? How do I know? I think if they found that thing in the trunk, we ought to get out of here, because that's, that's murder. We ought to try to get clear of this part of the country altogether. I told you before, and I'll tell you once more, we ain't going nowhere as long as there's a hundred grand in that chest up there. Mr. Carter, she's all gassed up and ready to go. Good. Well, you ready, Alice? I've been ready for hours. Did you put the luggage in the trunk? Oh, I tossed it in the back seat. There are only three bags, and we'll be there in 15 minutes. Uh, Mr. Carter, hmm? are you sure you and Miss Carter want to go out there tonight? Are you sure you wouldn't rather stay with Miss Purdy? When we can get to our own cottage? <laughs> oh, I'm certainly in favor of going on. Well, don't you... Don't you think we should, Mr. Millet? Well, I... I don't want to frighten you or nothing, Miss Carter, but this car was found abandoned right in front of your cottage, and, uh... Oh, I... I guess it's all right, and the sheriff's waiting for you at the cottage. If you don't feel perfectly safe after talking to him, you, you can just turn around and come on back. Right. So, let's go, Alice. All right. I guess. I, uh, I hope I haven't upset you none, Miss Carter. No, I just... Oh, it's nothing. What, Alice? 
Oh, for a moment, I just... I just didn't want to get into the car. Oh, it's nothing. A goose walked over my grave. That damn sheriff hasn't made a move since he got back into his car. Yeah, he, he's reading something, some kind of a book. Yeah. All right, let's go. Go? We're going to clear out like I said, Ernie? No, stupid. We're going in the cottage. Oh, come on, Ernie. As long as he sits there in his car reading or listening to his radio or whatever he's doing, what's to keep us from sneaking in the back way, taking the suitcase full of bread and sneaking out again? What's to stop us? The sheriff, if he catches us in there. Well, he's not going to catch us. For Pete's sake, Sid, ain't you got no guts at all? <laughs> You're not very talkative, Alice. Are you feeling all right? Oh, sure. Sure, I'm okay. <laughs> you don't sound very positive about it. I'm... Well, I don't know. Spooked or something. I just don't feel right riding in this car. Don't ask me why. May you feel all right otherwise? Not really, no. I feel kind of achy all over. You know, my legs mostly... They ache like anything in my back and my chest. And I keep wanting to double up. You know that feeling. You just want to curl up into a ball. Here, let me feel your forehead. I don't have a fever. I'm sure I don't. Have I? Hmm. It doesn't feel like it. Would you mind terribly if I just sort of curled up here on the seat? No, of course not. Would you rather move into the back seat? Oh, it's all full of luggage. Well, you can put the bags in the trunk. No, don't bother. We'll be there pretty soon anyway. I'll just curl up here. Am I in your way? No, no, no. no. But you look awfully uncomfortable. Well, if you want to know, I am. Well, then don't stay that way. Come on, sit up. No, I'll give this a few minutes. I mean... I can't explain it, Steve. But I feel like I have to stay in this position. Like somebody's forcing me to. Who's forcing you? Certainly not me. But I don't like the sound of any of this, Alice. I think we should... Steve, turn the car around. What? Turn around. I don't want to go to the cottage. I want to go back to Winville. But why? I can't tell you why. Uh, uh, well, uh, we... We better go back to Winville and see a doctor. No, I don't want to go... Back to Winville to see a doctor. Okay, okay, okay. The lane back to the cottage should be showing up any time now. Can't you drive faster? I'm very uncomfortable, you know. Well, uh, well, uh, why don't you sit up straight? Of course you're uncomfortable all rolled up into a ball that way. I've told you and told you this is the way I have to be. Now stop nagging me about it and get us to that cottage, will you? What is it, Alice? You don't even sound like yourself. Just turn this car around and go back to that lane. What is wrong with you? You don't sound a bit like my Alice. Of course I don't sound like Alice. Why should I? Now get me up to that cottage and get me out of this car. Fast. Why should Alice sound like Alice? She really doesn't sound like herself, does she? To me, she sounded like... Well, call me fanciful, if you wish. She sounded more like Aunt Grace. Although Alice and Steve are not aware of it, Aunt Grace is right there in the car with them. She's dead, of course, and that ought to be the end of her in this world. But is it? I'll return shortly with Act Three. The question we must deal with is simply this. How dead does a dead body have to be? All the way dead, you say? Well, that's very true as far as our five workaday senses can make out. But there's a lot going on in the world around us that our senses may not perceive. Who are we, then, to say that death must be only what we make it out to be? Ernie Blake and Sid Sullivan, the two men responsible for the presence of Aunt Grace's dead body in the car, are still in the underbrush that surrounds the cottage. What if the back door is locked, Ernie? Then I'll pick the lock. Hold it. Hold it. Sheriff's got his motor running. No, no, it ain't the sheriff's car, Ernie. There's another car coming up the lane. I can see the lights. Mm, like we ain't got enough trouble already. 
Okay, we'll stay right here where we are and see what happens. Well, who could be coming out here? Nobody but you and me knows about the money up in the attic. Tad Beatty and Aunt Grace used to know, but they're... Shut up. And stay closer to the house in the shadows. They just pulled up in back of the sheriff's car. It look, It looks like... Good Lord. What is it, Ernie? It's the car we had, the one we rented from that garage. It, it, it can't be. I mean, I mean, how can it? The guy rented it to somebody else. And that means... That means nobody's opened the trunk. You mean she's still in there? Must be. They found her in there. You know, damn well the sheriff's office had impounded the car for evidence, so they didn't. So she's still in there. Well, what are we gonna do, Ernie? Hide out and wait. What else? Uh, you, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, are you? Uh, yes, that's right. Well, <clears throat> I'm Sheriff Tulliver. My office radioed me that you two were on your way. Well, uh, we thought since the car was abandoned right in front of our cottage, we'd feel better about things if you stayed around till we got here. It's a funny thing, the car being left right here in front of the cottage you rented. Yes, it's quite a coincidence. Yeah. I can't stand the smell of coincidences. I just don't trust them. Steve? Oh, yes, Alice, you feeling better? Couldn't we just get in the sheriff's car and go back to Winville with him? But why should we? Uh, I... I don't think I'm going to like it here. Well, I suppose we could. You're I... perfectly welcome, of course, if that's what you want. I've been over to the house, top to bottom, and there's nobody in there. It does seem like a shame for you to spoil your whole vacation just because a couple of nuts decided to ditch a rented car in front of your cottage. Alice. Oh, I suppose it's all right. I'm just feeling spooked tonight for some reason. Of course we'll stay. I was just... Being silly. Well, anything I can do for you folks before I go on back to town? Mm, I guess not. No, no. Yeah, I'll be going then. If you should uh, need me for anything, feel free to call on me. I'd like to know how we're going to call on him with no phone in the house. Everything's going to be all right, Alice. I'll, I'll go get the bags. I'm not sure I can get out of the car, Steve. Can't get out of the... Alice, you've been screaming to get out of the car all the way out here. Now you say you I know. Can't... It doesn't make sense. But but it seems to have changed its mind. It? Changed its mind? Oh, stop picking away at every little thing I say. Well, uh, no. Look, come on, Alice. You're just tired of riding, that's all. Now, once we're inside... Get away from me. Get your hands off me. Uh, uh, Alice, now something is wrong. It wasn't you saying that. It, it didn't sound the least bit like you. It didn't feel like me either. I didn't even want to say it. It was like something or somebody made me say it. She looks like she's sick or something. Yeah, the way he practically lifted her out of the car and she's not walking so good. Maybe they won't stay, huh? They'll honey. stay. They're going to be here for two or three weeks, maybe longer. Why do things like this always happen to happen to me? But we'll just have to go away and leave the money in there, Ernie. I mean, for now, anyway. Will you shut up about going away and leaving all that money here? But, but what else can we do? We just can't walk up and say, Look, Mr. and Mrs. Who's, it's the loot from a bank heist. It's stashed in your attic. Would you mind if we go up there and get it? Hey, you know something? That ain't such a bad idea you got there. You're kidding. You ain't really gonna go up and talk to him, are you? Not out here. We'll wait a while after he goes back in. And Sid. Yeah? You let me do the talking, you hear? You button your lip and keep it buttoned. You mean I gotta be deaf and dumb again? Yeah, that's what I'll tell them if they ask. Alice? Alice, where are you? Back in the bedroom, Steve. I thought I'd just lie down for a minute. Oh, it's a good idea. You're just worn out, that's all. Oh, I hope so. I don't know. Somehow I feel so... I can't tell you. So... so creepy. Alice, what in heaven's name are you doing? Why are you all curled up in a ball there in the bed? Why do, why do you keep doubling up like that? Steve, I'm sorry, but there's something very strange going on. I have to lie doubled up like this. 
That's all I can tell you about it. Steve, it's like... Like I was in a little cramped space, all curled up this way, and there isn't room to straighten out. Like being in a... in a closet. Oh, now... Now, that's just nonsense, Alice. It's... Steve, hmm? it's as if somebody else is controlling me. Uh, I think we'd better get you back to Winville. There must be some kind of a doctor there, and I, I think you need a doctor. No, I'm not going to see any doctor. Oh, oh, all right, all right, then you, you stay here, and I'll bring the doctor to you. Now, I'll go into Winville and get him. You're not to do any such thing. I don't want that car moved away from here. Do you hear me? Well, you just can't lie there tying yourself up in knots and talking foolishness. There... Oh, somebody at the door. Don't answer it. You're to stay away from that door. Well, it's probably the sheriff come back for something. He and the garage man are the only two who know we're here. Don't let them in. Don't go near that door. It is all right, Alice. Uh... What can I do for you? Well, I, I, I'm sorry to butt in on you this way, uh, but we forgot to take one of our suitcases when we left. I, I, I don't understand. Oh, well, you see, uh, we were the tenants in here before you took the place. Uh, we had one of our suitcases up in the attic. You know, I, I can't remember how come, but we forgot to take it with us. That's them. They are the two. They are murderers. Alice, why don't you just... That like... one there, the young one. He killed me not more than a couple of hours ago. Shot me dead. <laughs> Sheriff. Hello, Hank. Sorry to bother you at home this way. Oh, no bother at all, Sheriff. Uh, Mrs. Lockery called you a few minutes ago. She lives out on Elm Street? That's right. Next door to Aunt Grace Beatty. She said she saw Aunt Grace get into a car with a couple of strange men this afternoon drive away. Says Aunt Grace hasn't come back and it's dark now and Aunt Grace never goes out or stays out after dark. I've heard that before, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Lockery says she recognized the car the minute she saw it. Says it was one you ran out. And, uh, the strangers would be those two that left the car high and dry halfway up to Gooch's Peak? Well, that's the way I figure it. It's not natural for Aunt Grace to go out with them and then, then just disappear. What can you tell me about these two? Well, just that they rented the car and said they was looking for a summer cottage. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I'll just drive out to that cottage and have another look around. Might be something I missed, not knowing at the time that I was looking for Aunt Grace. Okay, just stay right where you are, lady. Don't come a step closer or both you and your husband, both of you, are going to be very dead. Uh, please, Alice, d do as he says. Don't you please, Alice, me. You think I'm going to stand here and let them walk up them stairs to the attic and then walk out with all that money? What do you know about any money upstairs? I know all about it. What do you think? Half of that money's mine by right, and I don't aim to see you two walk off with it. <sighs> and... Grace? Who did you think it was? Alice, I ask, why are you talking this way? It ain't Alice right now, mister. It may look like her, but it ain't her. I'm sorry about taking her over this way, such a pretty little thing. But it was the only way I could think of. I'll be through with her in a bit. Good Lord. I don't give a damn ghost spirit anything you want to call yourself. You ain't going to keep me away from that money. <laughs> Sid, you got your gun? You see, Sid don't talk, but he can understand all right. You got your gun, Sid? See, he nodded. He hears what I'm saying. Okay, Sid, you hold your gun on these two while I go up and get that suitcase. You better give me that gun. Alice, don't do anything. Oh, stay away from me, lady, or I'll have to... Okay, lady, I give up. Get off of me. I told you not to talk, see? Yeah, but how could... How could... Ah, it don't matter anyway. All right. What I got in this suitcase, if you don't know already, I got $100,000. I'm mighty close to it. And it's all mine. You thought I was going to split with you, Sid? Yes. Well, maybe I'm a little bit sorry, but come right down to it. You're too stupid to live anyway. Oh! Alice, Alice, don't do anything. He'd just as soon kill you as not. I'm gonna have to anyway, let's face it. You too. 
I can't have a lot of witnesses walking around shooting off their mouths, now can I? You're going to have to get past me if you expect to get out of this house with that money. I don't know which one you are, the old lady that's dead or the young one you look like. But a bullet's going to take you out whichever. I'll get past you, all right. I'll kill you. All right, hold it, hold it right there, everybody. Drop that gun, you on the stairway. Sheriff, he killed that man. And I ain't true yet, Sheriff. Alice. Alice, are you all right? Not yet, I ain't. That man dead, Sheriff. Uh, it's a shot in the shoulder, Mrs. Carter. Or, or are you... Uh, you sound exactly like Aunt Grace. Who else would I sound like? I'd like to know. Where? I mean, uh, <clears throat> where's your own body? I'm in the trunk of that car outside there. Get me out of there and I'll be finished with a lot of you. <laughs> still plan to spend your vacation here at the cottage in spite of what's happened? I think so, if it's all right with Steve. <laughs> well, good. If there's anything I can do for you while you're here, be sure to let me know. We will, and thank you. <laughs> Bye. Be seated, dear. Well, are you, uh, sure you want to stay, Alice? Yes, I really do. Oh, it was an unpleasant experience, I admit, but somehow now it's all over... I sort of like old Aunt Grace. Ah, well, I don't. If I could have figured out a way to get at her without hurting us, she wouldn't have had things so much her own way, believe me. <laughs> I'd have chopped you up and had you for breakfast, Sonny. Alice, was that... That wasn't... Uh... <laughs> You'll never know, will you, Steve? So it was a simple case of possession. <laughs> oh, of course it was. That last bit about Aunt Grace chopping Steve up and having him for breakfast, that was just Alice having the last word. A simple case of possession. You don't think possession is such a simple matter? Good heavens, it happens all the time on Mystery Theater. And if you heard it here, you know you can believe it. I'll be back in a few minutes. Steve and Alice stayed on in the cottage where they had had such an extraordinary experience. And the remaining three weeks were as peaceful as the first few hours had been terrifying. Alice got a beautiful suntan. And the fishing was so good that she has sworn never again to fry a brook trout. Our cast included Catherine Byers, Earl Hammond, Court Benson, and Guy Sorrell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.